Greg here again with another video to help you transform your business, transform your life. In this case, we're looking at Odoo and how to use a web controller uh, to accept parameters and that way um, create dynamic pages that can change based upon what you send to it in the URL. So like always, please go below, click like, click subscribe. It really helps us out. Now in this video, we're gonna look uh, begin off of what uh, and build on what we did in the last video. So I'm going to link above to our very last video and this video is pretty self-contained if you already understand web controllers but if you're already brand new to web controllers and you're like what's that what am I doing you'll want to watch that previous video. So basically this is the result of the web controller when you come to the URL for it Odoo controller underscore Odoo controller there and um, you can see the results we get which is basically the sales order name here, which is that, and then of course the partner ID's name right there. So if we come back and look at the code for this, we're gonna see that we have a route here. So this is where it picks that address up out of, out of your web browser. We have to make sure we have our website equals true. This controller grabs all of the sales orders. There's no filter here, it just grabs them all. Once it has them all here and there's no exception, vice passes, then it renders a template uh, named index right here and passes along the sales order data that we've grabbed from up here and, and puts it in a dictionary with a, a, a key sales. And so once this is done, it's going to call this template. We can jump over and take a peek at it. And this is the actual template in which it has some wrapper classes here for the web page so that it can display it inside of our Odoo website framework. We loop through all those sales records that come in, assign each one of them a sale tag so we can print out the name. And then in this case, we're print, going to the sale, finding the partner, and then saying their name. And so this is what results in this. So now what we want to do is make it so when we click one of these links, like click this, that it can take you to the actual document for that particular sales order, that specific sales order. So we're gonna to need to be able to pass inside our URL which sales order we want. And uh, we're gonna start by just taking a little baby step in that direction by creating another controller for our sale order. So let's go ahead and set up the, the def part of it here, our method. And I'm just going to call it sale order. And um, actually, we can call it display sale order. How about that? Display sales order. How about that. Good enough. Self, comma. And then we're going to pass along the ID. We'll probably use the ID there. And I'm just going to, for now, say print ID. And so this will print this in the console for us. So we can just make sure it's working once we set up our controller. And so let's go ahead and set up that controller, HTTP.route, so that stays the same, and this part can stay the same. And then what we just want to do is we want to tell it what type of data we're getting. So we do this with a little bracket, forward, greater than sign there. And, and then we do a colon and what we want the name of that to be. So this would be ID. So this needs to match this. And it's going to literally pass it into this method for us, which is really nice. And we want probably an ending, one of those. We don't probably want that. We do want that. And then an ending uh, forward slash there. So this is the syntax to pass data into a method using a web controller. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Now we still want to have our auth and public website here true. So let's go ahead and do that. And now with just this, let's restart like that. Look down here in our terminal, there's no errors. And then we're gonna jump back here. And now let's come after our web controller and just put a one. Oh no, we get an internal server error. Did I not, maybe I didn't restart. I think I did restart. URLs must start with a leading slash. Oh, oops. I needed that there like that. Let's try it again. So yeah, we need this there. We need that leading slash. That was a good error. It actually told us in the message there, URLs must start with a leading slash. Real easy to miss that, and it's nice that the error caught it, but let's refresh this. And we're 
still getting a frustrating error. Oh wait, there is no error. One, see the one here? So there we go, we're getting our one back. We're getting an error probably because we're not returning any, any data back like what it's expecting here in our, in our terminal. But you can see the one here and that's the most important thing. So if I come on here and I, and I type a uh, 1323 and hit enter like that, we're gonna see 1323 here. So we know that this is working and it's printing everything up. So now let's create another template uh, to consume this. Now we can begin by coming up here to templates and just, you know, making a copy of this one. That's probably the easiest way to start. So let's make a copy of this one. And let's go ahead and name this one sale order like that. So that's what we'll call this template when we decide it's time to do something with it. And we can say sale order here instead of the, the quotes and our, our uh, plural. And then now inside of this, we're not going to do a loop, of course. We know we're not going to want that. So instead, we're going to do like an H1 probably. And we can have like the, the sales order number here. So we'll say sales order goes here, H1, like that. So this is just, uh, for now, just a placeholder so that we can say this is where the sales order is going to go. This is the template we're calling. So let's wire this in as a first step. So we can just take this right here, this little piece, and we'll paste it here. And um, right now we don't really have any data to send. So let's just send this, we can just probably punch this ID in here for now. And it's not gonna do anything. Like we're passing the data along, but the template doesn't really use it. We're just wiring in the template just so we can test it out and make sure it works. So this won't be indexed anymore. It's gonna be sales underscore order. And um, I think that is what we will do for now. So let's refresh. Make sure there's no errors here. And we will refresh again. Now we got a so web uh, order sales order in website one not found. So it didn't find our view. So it didn't find this inside of here because it was sale order instead of sales order. So little things like that. I'm going to leave those errors in there because you're going to get them yourself. This has to match and it's probably not a bad idea to copy and paste just to make sure if I had copied and pasted, I wouldn't have got that error. So now let's refresh again. And you can see sales order goes here. So now we know our controller is calling the correct template and everything's wired in. So it was a, a little baby step. So now let's see what we need to do to set up our actual URL so that it can pass along the right uh, link. And so that means we're gonna have to jump over in our template, we're right here. And here in our sale, we're gonna want to put an A, and then we'll probably, we want it after our P tag. Um, we want to have an A tag for a, a link. And we can go t-attf-href. And so what this is basically saying is it wants to set the href, the, the, um, the attribute, set the attribute of this href using a function to slash odoo controller. And now here's the magic. We can do, and you just have to, to know this syntax. So there's no like way you're gonna know this unless you just used it. You do two curly braces like that, slug sale. And yeah, it sounds silly. Um, and I'm gonna end that one there and end that one there. And I'm just gonna pause a second to explain just roughly what this is doing. So. This is going to give us the link basically here, uh, as far as the URL goes, the URL link that's going to match this controller right here because it's expecting this integer right here next to it. So um, this slug is basically a built-in framework syntax that's going to take 
this sale object and find the ID out of it, encode it for us, and, and create this href for us. So now if I refresh everything, making sure there's no errors here, and we come back and do a refresh. Now, nothing's going to change here. This, this doesn't change uh, anything at this point on this page, right? But if we come back to our Odoo controller page, we have links now. And look at, if you go at the bottom, you'll notice the links actually have a SOO-2 thing. So we can't use, we don't want to use our integer anymore if I click this, this isn't going to work because it's expecting an integer. And um, Odoo has a special framework. It's passing along a like codified uh, string combination with the integer. And uh, for whatever reason they do that, that is the way they do it. So we, that means we have to change our controller just a little bit uh, with a different syntax here to pick this up. So let's jump back into our controller here and instead of int in D because this doesn't this isn't like telling us anything about the model but there's a special syntax here that we can use and we can actually say model and then put in parentheses quotes sale.order and then end quote there and then now after this before the end of the brace we can still use our colon and say what we want in there and so Maybe I don't want to use um, ID because we're really getting a sales order. So I'm going to say SO here. And then I'll change this to SO here. So we're really clear that we're really getting a sales order tag identifier. And we're in this model sale order thing is important and it's critical so that Odoo knows how to accept this data coming in through here uh, like this, right? And so, so this is... Um, this this is really important right here. So now what we want to do is it's just a matter of we're going to pass along this SO now. And I'll just call this sale order. And we're not doing anything with it yet. We're just we're just going to leave it like it is. We just want to make sure that this part works and doesn't error. And so now if I do a print SO in here, we're going to get a, a different result and we'll get to see the data as it comes through. Uh, into here just so, so that we know that it's coming in and then this obviously is going to match this and right now we're not doing anything with sale order this data we're just prepping it so that then we'll change this once we get one more step iteratively along and this is what I would recommend for people who are new to developing you don't want to make like five or six changes and then go try to run it and get errors make a change run it make sure you've you've made what you need to make so if i click this we're just going to get sales order goes here but if we come in and we look in our in, in here we can see this sale order dot order one comma this is the object so what that means is if we came in here and said print so dot name um i think actually i think we would say so name like that and we'll try that syntax and refresh no error that's a good sign and you'll notice here's the output soo one in our in our console so we're we're hitting the console first just to test things. So now we have our sales order here that's getting passed into our template. So that's what that means is we can come back here to our template and use exactly the same syntax here. It's just gonna be a little bit different. So let's and say sales order number and let's go ahead then and drop in our sales name but remember it's not going to be sale anymore it's going to be whatever it is here like that and so we're going to refresh get that come back shift refresh 
And there you can see it right there. S O O O O one. If I come back and click on this one, we get S O O O O two. Now just for kicks, so we can see how we would extend this after this H one, I can literally just take this copy and paste it down and change our data set that we're using. And there's no reason why we have to use different data sets here. In fact, you might want to use the same. I just happen to do that. So we'll re refresh it again. And now when we go to this one, you'll see that it has just what we would expect. And naturally, you know, being a tutorial video, there's, this should get you where you need to go. If you need to put more information out there, nest to other links, pull in other models. This hopefully has gotten you the foundation you need to really start building more sophisticated web controllers. So with that said, I hope you liked the video. Please go below, click like, click subscribe. Leave some comments too, it really helps us out. And I will see you in the next video.